Hi, my name is Ryan Champagne, and I specialize in IT and communications. I'm a born leader, and I excel in creating a solid foundation for my team to succeed. Today, we're going to be talking about how to set up a home media network and how you can benefit from it. Um, and one of the main things we're going to be doing is being able to stream media, such as videos, or home videos, or any, or any other type of movie, and other types of music across the network wirelessly. We want to watch movies and music over the network, so that's going to be our reason why we need a network. Before we start putting it together though, we need to make a plan. Where will things be and what do we need? We're going to need at least a modem, a router, and an adapter for each computer we want hooked up. For better installation, get the same brand, that way there is better compatibility in between the different products. This is what our network will look like. We'll be using a Linksys WRT350N wireless N gigabit router. This router is great because it has a USB port built in to make having an external hard drive hooked up extremely easy. First thing we need to do is hook up the power supply. Our next step is to connect our router to our computer using our Ethernet cable. In order to do this, we just need to plug in to one of the four ports shown in orange to our other Ethernet port on our computer. As shown on the router, we cannot use the blue port. The blue port is an internet port, and that is what the modem hooks up to. So we need to use the four other ones, which is a switch. In other words, it just makes us able to get into the router and make changes. So we'll connect to the number one port, and after that, you take the other end of the cable and plug it into our computer as so. Now we're ready to start setting up our configurations. What's shown here is a list of other routers and their default settings. Ours is Linksys, listed in blue. There is no username, only a password of admin. Right now I'm in our LAN properties window and I'm just changing the TCP IP settings to automatic so our connection to the router will be easily obtained. Now we open the browser and we type in our address to the router, which is 192.168.1.1. In our case, it didn't ask for a prompt, but sometimes it does. In that case, use the default prompt shown earlier. This slide just shows us a little bit about what security is and why we need it. We are now in basic setup mode. We will now be changing our connection settings to DHCP, which is automatically set on. Um, there are some other options, but we're using DHCP for home use. It's much easier. We're also going to change our time zones to the proper time zone. Now just click Save Settings and it'll save it. After this, we'll move on to our wireless section. In the wireless section, we're going to change the SSID, which is a unique identifier for our network. After that, there's different modes. There's G, N, B, and Mixed. We're going to use Mixed, so that way all network adapters can be used and then we'll save. After that we'll go to the wireless security. We're gonna make it WEP since it's the easiest. It's not the safest but for home use most of the time it's okay. You can give a unique passphrase that you want to share between the other people on your network. We're also going to do 128-bit encryption since it's a little bit stronger than the other type. Then we click generate and it'll give us unique keys that we can use for each computer. These can also be used on other computers other than four. Then click save and the settings are saved. You want to save each time because sometimes when you switch tabs it won't save. So it's a good precaution to do that anyway. Now we'll go to the administration tab and we'll actually change the password to log in. And so that way it's not the default setting. So if someone just coming by doesn't just type in a password and can get right into your router and change all your settings. We're going to make sure we can get wireless access, but we want to make sure that you cannot get in remotely. So we're going to make sure that's disabled. Then our UPnP and other options here should be enabled as followed. This will allow us to have our media server set up properly. After this, click Save Settings and it'll save. It'll then ask you for our username and password. The username is the SSID and our password is the new password that we just changed it to. It's also a good idea to use the backup button in that same window to back up all of our settings that we've already done that we don't have to do it again if something happens. Now we'll configure our media device. 
we go to the storage tab and we hit refresh after we plug in the USB device. Now we can select our partition and then we'll be now be setting up a unique share name so we can share it across the network. We're going to call it music and then select our partition it's going to be on. We click it, click OK, and then click create share. So now set up a share in the database for our new folder. We're now going to go over to the next tab under storage which is to actually set up the media server. We're going to need to enable the settings and then finish setting up our partitions once again. After that we'll click save and it will be complete. It does take a few seconds to finish this last step after clicking the button so be patient. After a couple seconds, it's successful. Last, we're going to go over the administration tab. We're going to review some of the things we have set up for our media share now. You might want to change the admin and guest passwords for the user and group management. It's really up to you and how you decide to set up your network. But this is where you do it in the administration tab. Now just connect your router to the modem, unplug the power to the modem, wait 10 seconds before plugging it back in and it should connect. Then when you click on the name just type in your network key, click connect and it should start connecting. After this the wireless network window will come back and it should say you're connected. If not you need to call your ISP and get them to reset your modem for you. Some of them have a battery backup and it takes a little bit of time but they can do it for you over the phone. That's it. I hope you had a good time watching this tutorial and I hope it was helpful. If you have any other questions, you can email me at the address shown above. Have fun streaming music and media and other videos over your network.